Released in 2009, X-Men Origins Wolverine is exactly what the title describes, and takes its earliest scenes from the 2001 miniseries Origin. Most of this movie, however, takes place in more modern times, and concerns itself with the rivalry between Wolverine and Sabretooth. This movie also features the character of Wade Wilson, but he is almost unrecognisable from the wisecracking Deadpool of the 2016 movie. So come with me now, my human friends, as we discover the origin of Wolverine. Meet James Howlett. He's a mutant. And his tale is not a happy one to tell. As the opening titles roll, we see him bond with his half-brother, Victor across a century of conflict. Victor grows cold over this century, which costs them dear, as they're about to be shot. So, James Hallett's mother was having an affair with the groundskeeper, as you do. James was a product of their union, only he was never told, and only found out upon the day that he discovered that he had claws. Because the angry, drunken groundskeeper had just been fired, and had come in a drunken rage up to the house to have his revenge. This is how James discovered he had claws. He runs off with his half-brother Victor, and they spend the next hundred or so years fighting in any war going to ease the pain. Which is where Major Williams Stryker enters this tale. And so our protagonists are drafted to a mutant black ops team. Their mission? Discover the location of a very special meteor. And Stryker is insistent on this point. But James has had enough. Oh man, like a hundred years of war. Can't imagine what that'd do to a mind. Cut to six years later, and our hero, now going by another name, has found some semblance of peace. Victor, however, has not. Should have gone Merc. I hear you can make a killing at it. Oh, I made it funny. Come on, anyone? Anyone? Oh, thanks Rob. Rob again. Robin Croydon. Never my man. Striker warns. Logan. But our protagonist is having none of it. Enter Victor, and exit Kayla Silverfox, who had been taming our Wolverine. Logan swears vengeance as brother fights brother. Sadly, Logan's bone claws don't cut it in round one. You ever notice that Wolverine's bone claws and Wolverine's metal claws look kind of different? Like the bone claws are like rounder. And the metal claws are like flatter and sharp. Because the bone claws would be kind of sharp on the edges, but you know, you know what I mean. It's just kind of odd, is all. Blinded by grief, rage, and vengeance, James Logan Howlett makes a very bad decision. Now, for those in the back, the very bad decision was to have his bones coated with adamantium. You know the worst part of all of it? They couldn't put him under for it. It wouldn't work on him. They had to do the whole thing while he was wide awake. Yikes. No wonder he's so crazy. 
and in a cauldron of agony and adamantium, Wolverine is born. Escaping the facility, Wolverine is taken in by a kindly couple. But oh dear, Stryker lied. And then he removes the witnesses so as to frame our Wolvie. <laughs> These military types, I tell you. And so Wolverine sets out on a roaring rampage of revenge. Beginning with Fred Dukes, who spills the beans about Stryker's true plan. So yeah, this was around about the time when Jason Stryker causing his mother to try and dig the visions out with a knife to the temple was still a pretty recent occurrence. So Rev, uh, Colonel Stryker, decides to craft the anti-mutant mutant in response. Because that's bound to work. Which leads our hero to Remy LeBeau, Gambit. Who is quickly forgotten when Wolverine finds his brother has killed again. But Gambit is none too happy about being forgotten. Somewhat happier, however, when Wolverine promises revenge against Stryker, Victor, and the facility that made them all. But Stryker's master plan is revealed, along with more of Stryker's lies. Yeah, she weren't dead. She just took a pill that slows the heart way down. Like one beat a minute slow. I did that once. Got me inside another of Stryker's facilities. Turns out he didn't want me. But Kayla's love is true. And she leads Wolverine to stage a jailbreak. But Stryker has one last experiment to unleash. So this guy's Weapon 11. The distillation of ten other mutants into a perfect soldier. With a mouth that's been sealed shut. Maybe he was talking to him before the procedure, I don't know. Weapon 11 rains hell on our hero. Until we discover how thick blood really is. Yeah, they're fighting on top of a nuclear cooling tower. Fighting on top of a nuclear cooling tower is cool. And Weapon 11 is dispatched. But oh dear, Kayla caught a stray bullet. And Wolverine gets two direct bullets. Wolverine's memories are gone. And James Howlett is dead. But the story of Wolverine doesn't end here, even if the movie does. Well, that's another one down. But there's only room for so much Wolverine on the Mutant Thon squad. And I'm not sure there's room for this. The plot, being that most of the interesting parts, Wolverine's illegitimacy, Thomas Logan and Elizabeth Howlett, mutancy in the mid-1800s, were glossed over in the first few minutes, is the basic revenge story, with a sprinkling of X-Men to keep people interested. Add into that the bizarre character choices, Fred Dukes only debatably being a mutant, the whole furore of not pool, which took another seven years to bring the character to screen in a recognisable format, and of course the retconned elements of Scott Summers and Kayla's sister, and you can hear the fanboys raging. But leaving the raging comic book diehards aside, for what it actually was, the set pieces were fun, the characters they got right were good, and before his turn as Weapon 11, Wade Wilson, for what we saw of his mouthy persona, wasn't terrible. But these characters are introduced, discarded, and summarily dispatched far too easy, and in the end, all but a few of them serve as MacGuffins for the boss encounter at the end. Which is my main gripe with the pacing of this movie. All of which can be summed up in a single word. Originitis. At 102 minutes, the best material is front-loaded and quickly forgotten, leaving only a reheated revenge movie for a love that isn't lost, and a villain whose worst crime is being a puppet master against a threat that doesn't even make itself known for decades after. Yes. This movie is not great, but it isn't terrible. There are moments of warmth and humour. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is still by far the best thing in the entire movie. And Ryan Reynolds gives us a look at a Wade Wilson that will only improve with the seven years that follow between this movie and Deadpool. The effects, for the most part, have aged well, and the movie at least flows well enough, keeping the focus mainly on Wolverine, 
where it belongs in a movie bearing his name. Overall though, this isn't so much the story of the life of Wolverine, but the death of James Howlett. And there's a part of me that thinks a true James Howlett movie would have been so much more interesting. The saga of James Howlett is over, but the saga of Wolverine will continue. This is your humble host, the multi-sided Funky M, inviting you to join me in- Ah! Oh, what the hell was that? Like a massive pain behind my eyes. This is your humble host, the multi-sided Funky M, in a rather large amount of pain, inviting you to join me in 14 days, because after I get this checked out, we'll head off to Japan for the Wolverine. Till then, see you around, humans. Yeah.